This week's episode sponsored and brought to you by Brilliant Baking Products, available exclusively at Amazon.com. Welcome to Brilliant Baking, the show that takes the mystery out of baking and delivers hints and tips straight to your screen. This week we answer your questions and serve up some shortbread with a twist. First question, which is better for baking, butter or margarine? From Iris Scott. That's a great question and we were talking about that earlier. Um, I think sometimes it just comes down to personal taste. I and Andrew always really like using butter. Um, if a recipe particularly asks for margarine, then I think you should stick with that and, and don't substitute butter. Now, margarine was very popular, wasn't it? Sort of in the late 60s, early 70s. Mm. Um, and I know our grandma always used margarine or stalk um, for all of her bakes. But I think as time's gone on, we've realised now that margarine's not that good for you. And so our preference is butter. But like Lee says, if a recipe specifically asks for margarine, then we do stick with margarine. Yeah, butter definitely gives you a better taste and flavour. And it's not healthy to have a lot of it, but a little bit safe. What is your favourite cheesecake flavour? I'm looking for inspiration! Shouts Sylvia Robertson. Oh, we really don't like cheesecake. No, cheesecake is my least favourite pudding. Um, however, if I had to choose one, then I would definitely go with Bailey's. Um, I had a boyfriend whose favourite pudding was cheesecake. So when we first started going out and before I got into baking, I bought a packet mix and substituted all of the milk that they suggested with Bailey's, thinking it would be nice, and it was inedible, it was horrible, so I don't recommend doing that, but there are some delicious Bailey's cheesecakes out there. Yeah, and like Lee, if cheesecake's on the menu, it would be the last thing that I chose, but I have to say that when I was in New York, I tried New York baked cheesecake, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Last question, and Erica Phelps says, I love baking with chocolate, make me something nice. Well, what can't you do with chocolate? There's so many recipes out there. But I recently made a really nice chocolate shortbread. The family absolutely loved it. It's quick, it's easy to make, so I'm going to make that for you today. Okay, so for chocolate shortbread swirls, you're going to have to make two lots of dough going to make a traditional shortbread and then we're going to make a chocolate shortbread. They're really really easy to make. So we're going to start by making the classic shortbread. Um, I've got my flour and my salt in this bowl and I'm just going to sift that into the mixing bowl. And next we're going to add our caster sugar and then finally our butter. And I'm going to put that in the mixer going to mix it until it becomes like fine breadcrumbs and you can see they're already starting to come together into a, into a dough. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pull that together so it creates a dough. So once all of the ingredients have been pulled together it should look like a dough and you can give it a little bit of a knead and then once it's all together you're just going to put that in some thin film ready to go in the fridge. But before, before we put that in the fridge, I'm going to make uh, the shortbread dough number two. So this is exactly the same as we've just done, except this time you're going to add your cocoa powder. So I'm going to start by um, sieving the flour and the salt into the mixing bowl. I'm going to sieve the cocoa powder. Okay, then we're going to add the sugar and finally the butter. And then we're going to mix it all together again. Okay, so that's starting to come together nicely. At this point, if you have got a dough hock, you could add that um, to your mixer and mix it all together with your dough hock, but I do like to finish this bit by hand. So we've now got a really nice chocolatey dough. Again, just give it a little bit of a knead. It doesn't need too much. And that's also going to go into some cling film. And then both of your doughs go into the fridge for approximately 30 minutes. Okay, 
so our shortbread dough has been chilled in the fridge for 30 minutes and the next thing to do is to roll both of the doughs out into rectangular shapes around about the same size. The beauty of these biscuits is that they don't have to look pretty. In fact, the more rustic they look, the better. So don't worry if your uh, rectangles are not the same shape because we can easily rectify that. To make it around about one centimetre thick. I'm gonna do exactly the same with the chocolate dough and roll it out to roughly the same sort of shape and size. So once you've rolled your um, chocolate dough out, you're going to lift it up onto your plain dough. And then I'm going to place the dough onto a piece of uh, baking parchment and then I'm going to roll it up like a Swiss roll. Okay, so once you've rolled the two doughs together, you're then going to squeeze it just to make it longer, around about 22 centimetres long, so that you can cut about 14 slices out of it to make 14 cookies. Okay, so once you've um, sliced the dough, each slice should be around about a centimetre wide. You can then put them on the baking tray. Okay, so once you've placed all of your slices onto your baking trays, it's time for them to go into the oven. And they'll go into the oven for around about 30 minutes or until the white dough starts to go ever so slightly golden brown. So while they're baking in the oven, it's time for a quick ad break. Are you looking for quality, non-stick baking cases? Well, these silicon cups from Brilliant Baking are the ones for you. They're easy to use and easy to clean, and they are extremely versatile. You can use them for cupcakes, muffins, Yorkshire puddings, desserts, frozen treats, and they are ideal for serving snacks and nuts. And, as an added bonus, if you buy them now, you'll get a free subscription to the Brilliant Baking magazine. Welcome back. Well, the oven's just beeped, so that means that the biscuits are ready to come out of the oven and they smell fantastic. So there you have it. You can see that they're done because they're a lovely golden brown colour. So now all that's left to do is to leave them to cool down for a couple of minutes and then they'll be ready to eat. And that's it for today, we hope you enjoyed the show. Keep getting in touch, send us your questions and the photos of your bakes. We love to see what you've been up to, whether it's good or bad. You can contact us on Facebook, Twitter or email and the links are in the notes below. So remember to subscribe to the channel, like us and tell all of your friends. So until next time, here's to your brilliant baking!